I've learned so much from demographers from in the... Isn't it full screen? No? no? Can you put the L? L? So, yes. Okay. Okay, so I've learned so much from demographers in the last two weeks. So today I hope that I can deliver some of uh, economics insight uh, in the literature uh, to you. And so the overall theme of the, the workshop and the course has been around uh, stochastic process, agent-based simulation, social network, and economics decision theory. So I would like to emphasize that my work is in the um, part of economics decision theory. And so I want to say a bit about economics uh, because uh, there may be gaps that uh, you didn't expect. Okay, so at the core of economics is the um, theory of the decision makers. And this is the theories at the individual levels. Uh, after that, we will have the, the theory about the interaction among uh, several individuals uh, in a narrow context, which is called the game theories. And what is the narrow context? It is the context that uh, one player's action can change the whole course of the situation and affect the other's behaviors. Uh, at the highest level, we have the theory of the market, so in which one single consumer action has no marginal effect on the whole market. So this uh, literature has uh, criticisms for two things. The first thing is the ability of the individuals to do very complex uh, optimization. And the second thing is uh, the ability to do infinite recursive thinking of common knowledge. So what is common knowledge? It is the condition that everybody has to know everything about the games. And then ev everybody has to know that everybody knows everything about the games. And then everybody has to know that everybody knows that everybody, everybody knows everything about the game. So, okay, so people say that this is not human. And so until now, the, the narrative has substantially changed from, from the hyper-rational individuals to less demanding subjects. And so we can see that the theory of in individuals has incorporated psychologies and neuroscience. So we have behavior economics, uh, experimental economics, and neuroeconomics. Game theories also change. It uh, bring in the idea of evolution. And so it's basically, it exploits the effect of large numbers. So it doesn't talk about uh, one individual at a time, but it talks about the population playing the game over and over again. Or it talks about one individual, but with thousands of uh, trial and errors uh, iteration. And so it is called uh, evolutionary game theories. It doesn't reject the hyper-rational result of the classical theory, but it tries to answer the question, so how does individuals learn their way into the equilibrium? And so my work is in this part of the literature. Um, now I will talk about the game, the bargaining game, which is already mentioned before. Um, we consider a very simple version of the game in which uh, two players has to divide a pie of $10. So each can have three possible actions. Uh, I can claim a high fraction of the pie or a medium or a low fraction, which is equivalent to claiming eight, five, and two out of $10. So both players just write out uh, the numbers on a piece of paper and give it to another person to open it. And so if the sum of the claims is not bigger than 10, then we say that the claims are compatible and each get what they want. Otherwise, no one get anything. So here is the payoff of the payoff matrix of the game, and we have the, the row players and the column players. And the cell are the outcome and the payoff for each possible uh, match of their action. Uh, this game can be solved by best response logics as follows. So if the first players play medium, uh, no, uh, play high, then we look at this first round. Uh, so if the first play high, then the second um, person can either get zero, zero, or two. So the best that the second person can do is to claim lows because uh, two is bigger than zero and zero. And so if the first person claim medium, then the best for the per uh, second person to do is to claim five because five is bigger than two and zeros. And also, uh, the, if the first person uh, to claim low, then the best for the second is to claim high. So because this reasoning works for both parties, we have three rational uh, outcome of the game, which is um, the division of 2, 8, 5, 5, and 8, 2, and they are all efficient. Now, so what does this game has to do with the, the bargaining behavior? So think about the salary negotiation between workers or managers. 
or think about buyers and sellers in the market, they try to set the price to divide the distance between the willingness to pay and the willingness to sell. And so this, is, uh, this game captures the tension between two parties on how the benefit should be divided. And uh, the point is that uh, because we both want to reach an efficient agreement, we don't want to leave money on the tables. So we both want that, but the tension comes from the part that we both want to push the dividing point toward our own advantage. So that is the tension of, of this game. And so I, we study two different settings of the game, the one-shot and the repeated interaction. Uh, in the one-shot uh, settings, we will match agents to play the game for just one time and then done. So think about the, the situation that uh, the game is played between uh, two strangers or in an anonymous matchings. And in the repeated I uh, settings, um, the agents will be matched to play a number of rounds, more than one round. And then, uh, so think about uh, your busy partners or your boss or your colleagues and think about people that you have enough data history to form expectation on how they would behave in a particular situation. That would be the uh, people that you can form assumption about. So that would be the repeated interaction that we are talking about. So the strategy set will be different for the two settings. For the one-shot game, there are only three possible strategies to claim high, medium, or low. So uh, we can easily calculate the stable strategies um, because uh, there's only three. Uh, and I will show it later. Now in the repeated uh, settings, the numbers of strategies will grow exponentially with the number of rounds. For example, if to play for just 10 rounds, uh, there will be many possible strategies. Uh, one example would be, okay, I say that today I play high and tomorrow I, I play high also, but from that onward, I would play mediums. Or another example is that I can say that, okay, I will just claim mediums forever, no matter what. So we need strategy rep representation for the repeated game, and so they can be represented by a finite state machine a finite state machine is a machine that has a finite number of states and it has transition rules to jump between states. So you can think about a macro process because uh, it is similar in the sense that a uh, macro process has a state and also have transition rules. So here I show, okay, so the first machine here is uh, all medium. So it has only one state. It claims medium all the time. And its transition rule is very simple. It's uh, no matter what the other does, we will always stay in the in this state of uh, playing medium. So this is the strategies, uh, unconditional uh, strategies, because uh, it doesn't depend on what the other does. And so I show you three basic and unconditional uh, strategies of uh, this repeated game. Uh, is it OK uh, so far? OK. Uh, here is a, a bit more complex machine. So this one is called the accommodators. It has three states to claim mediums, to claim high and lows. And it starts to play mediums and it plays best, of, best respond to whatever the other does in the previous round. So what does it mean? Um, I, let's match it with the Ohio machine to see what happens. So in the first round, the accommodating machine will, will claim mediums and the Ohio machine will claim high. So they are not compatible. They both get zeros. However, in the second round, the accommodating machine will uh, retreat to claim low because it is the best respond to an aggressive move. So the Ohio machine will just keep, keep claiming high because it is what it does. And so they get two and eight, and it, it will be like this for the rest of the game. Uh, uh, this part will be the simulation. So imagine a world with many slots, so we can populate it with agent, and the agent will adopt the strategies to play. And I would like to note that the agent here is not actors. Uh, they are, can be called automatons or machine, and they do agencies. If uh, we give them a strategy, they will just play by the book until they terminate. And because uh, we try to mimic the evolution process, so I will speak a bit about the evolution idea. So evolution uh, process has to sub-process the selection and mutation. And the selection process is uh, the natural selection of the fitness strategies at the expense of the bad performers. And the mutation process is to keep adding varieties into the selection pools. So a simulation will have many cycles, and each cycle will have three typical phase, the matching phase, the learning phase, and the mutation phase. So this is the matching phase. Uh, initially, in the first cycles, I will generate a lot of random strategies, and the agent will adopt that. And, they, and then 
uh, we will match them in pair to play the, the bargaining game repeatedly and then I will collect the payoff sequence for each of the strategies and then to calculate the fitness vectors for them. So the fitness vectors is uh, just, it contains the fitness of all the available strategies in the population. These fitness vectors will be used for the learning phase. So in the learning phase, a small fraction of the population will be allowed to change their strategies. So they would look, uh, they would observe this uh, fitness vectors and then they would change accordingly. So technically, they just randomize over the finite vectors. So the better strategies will be more attractive and it, it will be more likely to be chosen in the next cycles. So it will become more popular. Uh, in these examples, uh, after the learning phase, there is uh, one more agent adopt the blue strategies. So which means that one less agent using the brown strategies. This is what we mean by saying that, okay, uh, the better strategies will just survive at the expense of the, the poor doers. Uh, and in the mutation phase, um, a small fraction of the population will be allowed to mutate based on their current strategies. So we can interpret that they experiment or they, making mis they are making mistakes. And this is to add a bit of a stochastic uh, factors into the models. Uh, this is the overall simulation cycles. So initially, we have the population, and then they, we match them to play either one shot or repeated game. And then we let them learn, and then they mutate, and the loops goes on. Oh, this is the result for the simulation of the one shot game. I plot here the population payoff average, which is always five, and uh, which means that all the agents will claim five in this uh, uh, cycle. So, this means that the 50-50 division is very, very stable in the societies. And so it's like the, you can say that this is the emergence of the convention of 50-50 divisions. And so how does, it, how does the convention work? Imagine that you play this game with a stranger in a different room and you have to write out the number you want, give to another person. So you want to get money home, so what would you do? You would think about the others and you would expect that uh, the other would claim five and you will expect that uh, you will get five and because that be left, it will actually make you write out the number five. And it happens because they, they run experiment, it happens that the majority of peoples are able to coordinate on the 50-50 divisions. And so in general, um, the convention works uh, with three conditions. First, uh, everybody expect to do something. For example, everybody expect to walk on the right. And then everybody expect others to do something. So everybody, uh, I expect other to walk on the right, and because of that belief, it actually makes me to walk on the right. And because this uh, reasoning works for everyone, so, uh, so the traffic is smooth and no one crash on anyone. And that is, uh, so basically the idea is that the belief will prescribe the action, and then the action will confirm the belief, and together they will make the convention become stable in the societies. Uh, now I will show uh, the, the way to calculate this math mathematically, uh, why uh, we have this uh, result here. And because uh, this is the main mathematical tools of uh, evolutionary game theory, so if you understand this part, you understand evolutionary game theory. So let's look at the, at the payoff matrix again. Uh, we, let the, we let the population play this game, and so we will let PL be the fraction of population playing lows and PM be the fraction playing mediums. So it means that the fraction playing high will be the rest of that, 1 minus PM minus PL. And so here is the graphical representation of the population state. So at point A here, you can see that uh, 1 fourth is playing low and 1 half is playing medium which means that uh, the rest of that, one fourth is playing high. So if you are an agent in this population state, what would you do? Uh, you will uh, ask the question of uh, like what choice do I, ha I have and what, uh, what is the bad choice among these choice. And so according to the rule of the game, you have three choice. You can uh, choose uh, to claim high or medium or lows. So to answer the second question, what is the best choice, then we have to calculate the expected payoff for each choice and then we choose the maximum values of that. So this is to say that uh, we are trying to maximize the expected payoff uh, of our decision, and this is a definition of rationalities in, in basic game theory.
So to be relevant, we will look at the uh, payoff matrix for just one person. Now, if I play high, then I can get 0, 0, or 8. Depends on uh, what kind of person I meet. If I was match, if I am matched with a high person, then I get 0. If I am matched with a medium person, then I get 0. But if I am matched with a low person, then I get 8. So I don't know what person I would be matched with, but I know the prob probability distribution of meeting them. So I know that uh, with one-fourth of the time, uh, probability one-fourth, I will be matched with a high person. With uh, probability one-half, I will be matched with a medium person. And with uh, probability one-fourth, I will be matched with a low person. So from this information, I can calculate the expected payoff of playing high. If so, if I choose to play high, then I will get uh, this two payoff here. So similarly, uh, if I choose to play me medium, then the expected payoff will be around 4. Also, if I choose to play low, then I will always get 2 here because it's like a safe choice, so I always get 2. So here we have three expected payoff for three possible choice. And so we choose the, the, maxi the max values of that, which is to choose to play medium. So this is to say that the best response at point A here is to play medium. So if you are an agent in this population state, uh, you know that the best to do is to change to play medium as soon as you have chance, so because everybody knows that. There is the propensities uh, to, okay. Okay, so uh, first we have the best response here to be play medium. And recursively do this for the whole triangles, we will be able to identify the regions of uh, different best response here. And what does it mean, the region of best response? So if the population is in this point, in this uh, green point, uh, so if you're Asian, you know that uh, it is the best thing to do is to play medium. So, so you, you will change to play medium as soon as you have a chance. And so because everybody knows that, then there will be a propensity to push the population toward the direction that increase the number of people playing mediums. And it is like the, uh, the force of nature that will just push the population toward that uh, upwards. And the same works for the low and the high best response regions. Um, so this is the sketch of this. And this is the, called the replicator dynamics. And it is, um, you can see that there are uh, many arrows here, which is called the trajectory. So it is a vector field. It shows the, the evolution of the population over time. So if you put a, a ball here, small ball here, then the force will just push it upward until this point according to this trajectory. If you put the ball here, then it will just end up at this point. And so what, uh, what does it mean, the word uh, replicators? It, uh, it is a unit to be replicated over cycles, so they call it replicators. And the replicator here is the strategies. Um, the word dynamics mean that it shows the, the evolution of the population over time, over cycles. And uh, here is a simulation that we run, and it approximates this uh, a theoretical prediction. So now I will ex explain the, uh, why the point of everybody claims medium is uh, very stable. So uh, because uh, in this dynamic, we will be interested in the rest point of the dynamic, the point that will not move anywhere. And so there are three interesting points here, A, B, and C. So the point C here, uh, because all the all these tra trajectory that is pointing toward it, it is called the basin of attraction for the point C. So we have that the, the basin of attraction for point C is very, very big. So, it, so if you just throw a ball randomly into these triangles, and most of the time it will just end up in point C. And uh, point B here, it's actually, there is no, uh, it has no zero basin of attraction, so no arrow which is, is pointing to it. The arrow just, the trajectory just uh, go across it. So it's, um, it has zero basin of attraction. And the point A here has a very small basin of attraction. And in a, a stochastic environment, so if there will be random fluctuation or disturbance of the force. So if, if you put a ball in point A here, so just very small random fluctuation, uh, it would like, um, 
agents are making mistakes, so they just they don't do best respond, but they just uh, randomly they play uh, stupid. And then uh, if you put so it it means that if you put a ball here in point A, sometimes uh, it will happen that the uh, a number of mistake will make the it will fall into this point, and because uh, it will be in fall into the basin of attraction for the point C here, and also for point B, just very small disturbance, and then, but the basin of attraction for point C is very is huge, so it is uh, nearly impossible to make to escape uh, the this point C just by mistake. Okay, so here at point A, maybe ten or five people are making mistake, and so the whole population just just fall into these trajectories. But here at point C, if you want to escape it, you need like 90% people are making mistakes, so it's impossible. So that's why the point C here is a stochastically stable uh, strategy. So everybody is just clear mediums. So uh, this is why we have this result all the time, like very consistent that uh, everybody just clear medium in the one-shot game. Now we come to the repeated game because the repeated game have uh, like many more strategies. So if you want to calculate the replic replicator dynamics for the game, then it will have many more dimension. So because uh, it is impossible to comprehend or impossible to, to solve for me, so I have to run simulation. And the result here, uh, we see that uh, this is for the one-shot game, the population average is always five. But uh, for the repeated game here, uh, we can see that uh, there are periods of uh, that uh, the population average get uh, below five, or even worse, it goes to 2.5, which is very low. And so, what happens in these periods? Um, so there are two kind of inefficient periods. The first kind is uh, when the population average is uh, below five; it's about 4.5 or four. So when I look into the population state of these uh, periods. It is full of tough, fair agents. So they claim high in the first round, and then they retreat to claim medium from the second round onwards. So, uh, so the typical payoff sequence is zero five 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 five. So this is to say that uh, the nice agreement is still reached after all, but uh, because negotiation is delayed in the first round, it is costly for the everyone for the, for the whole society. The second kind of uh, inefficient period is when the average of population gets down to 2.5, which is very very low. And so th there are two patterns in this kind of period. The first pattern is that it is a mixture of tough, weak, and flexible strategies. So there are agents that always claim high no matter what, and they are able to sustain in the population because uh, there are other weak uh, agents that accommodating them. and. Um, but um, so uh, so they get eight and two. But uh, the inefficient comes from the match between the the tough uh, player themselves. So if if I always aim high and then and then I meet with uh, a, a low person, then I will I will get eight, 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 a lot of eights. But if the among the tough player themselves, if they are matched, then they will get zero all the time. And this is what causes the population average to be very low. And so the second kind of uh, pattern is uh, when the population is full of alternators. So I, I claim high today, and, but tomorrow I retreat to claim mediums. So we get five, but then from uh, the next day, I go back to claim high again, and just like that. And so the typical payoff sequence is zero five zero five zero five, which is also because no one just, no one retreat to claim lows, but they just alternate between high and medium. So it means that uh, the population average also get to very lows. So this uh, so that will be the result of the repeated game. And I would like to conclude that uh, if you know the uh, if you have heard about the prisoner dilemmas, then you know that uh, in the situation that need the cooperative behaviors, if you are matched with a strangers then you don't trust that person and you defect and everybody is who defects. But if you are matched with a repeated partners, then you, we will start to cooperate, not because we are nice people, but because it is in our interest to do that. So it is to say that the uh, repeated interaction 
uh, stabilize the cooperative behavior in the societies. So it is, uh, it is good. But on the other hand, in the situation that we have conflicting interests, like in the bargaining game, then the re repeated interaction will destabilize the fair behaviors. And so if, if the interaction horizon lengthens, then negotiation can, can get bad. And it is costly for the, for the whole societies, for everyone. So that would be it. Okay, so if you have any question, just to clear...